television. As one of the most widespread forms of media today, television fits into what Guy Debord termed the society spectacle. In other words, television paints a picture of what people in power think the world should look like, or at least what they want you to think the world should look like. Some bearded dude named Karl Marx called this dominant ideology. Every day, hundreds of television networks broadcast this dominant ideology to millions of people around the world. And more often than not, these images and ideas contain a lot of white people. But don't worry, TV still shows plenty of people of color. They're just represented a little differently. Of all the major American primetime television networks plugging out dominant ideology night after night, one in particular prides itself on bold, cutting-edge original programming. I think you know the one. With its string of critically acclaimed, highly successful television shows, HBO certainly stands out as a quality network. And yet I wonder. For a network as distinguished as HBO, that claims to be above regular television, how does it represent people of color? Let's find out by taking a look at the latest HBO phenomenon, True Blood. Created by Alan Ball, and based on the popular series of novels by Charlene Harris, True Blood centers on Sookie Stackhouse, just your standard, pure, and innocent blonde-haired white girl. She lives a fairly normal life with her beautiful white friends, like Sam and Arlene. She even falls in love with a handsome white vampire named Bill. Now you may be wondering, if HBO claims to be so ahead of the curve, shouldn't Sookie at least have some friends of color? After all, it's supposed to be HBO, not TV. But don't you worry, she does. This is Tara, Sookie's best friend. Let's take a quick look at how the series introduces us to her. Hi, I'm looking for that thick, translucent plastic sheeting, the kind they hang in front of the doors or walk in refrigerators. Um, we don't sell that here. You could try Home Depot. <sighs> I tried them already, they sent me here. Oh. Now, I cannot believe you don't have that stuff. Uh, oh, I don't even know what it's called. I'm sorry. Well, you're supposed to have everything. Well, we don't have that stuff that you don't even know what it's called. Your website says that this is the most well-stocked store in five parishes. Now, I just drove over an hour from Marthaville. Uh-huh. Does our website have a phone number? I suppose it does, So, but... it never occurred to you before you drove an hour to pick up the phone and call us to see if we stopped whatever the hell it is that you're looking for? Well, I think that if a business chooses to classify itself as... Why don't you just find it online and have it delivered to your house? <laughs> Were you just looking for an excuse to wear them ugly-ass clothes? I would like to speak to your manager. Fine. Trust me, you are not getting me fired. I am quitting. You were just the fucking catalyst, and for that ought to thank you. You are a very rude young woman. Oh, this ain't rude. This is uppity. Ooh. That's for patting my ass too much. I'm gonna get my baby daddy who just got a prisoner come and kick your teeth in. Jesus, Tara, please don't do anything Oh, like my God! I'm not serious, you pathetic racist. I don't have a baby. Damn. I know y'all have to be stupid, but do you have to be that stupid? Shit. Oh, fuck this job. This is Donald Bogle. He's a film historian and author who focuses specifically on African American representation in film and television. He wrote an influential book called Toms, Coons, Mulattoes, Mammies, and Bucks, and he'll be helping us in part to get a grip on what HBO is doing here. Bogle identifies a character prevalent throughout early Hollywood cinema named Mammy, best portrayed by Hattie McDaniel in the 1939 film Gone with the Wind. Bogle writes, Mammy is distinguished by her sex and fierce independence. Sounds an awful lot like someone we just met, huh? As an angry, cynical black woman, Tara is the perfect foil for Sookie's kind-hearted and innocent white virginity. True Blood constantly reinforces Tara's stereotype. 
the headstrong, blunt, extremely temperamental, and, you guessed it, sassy black friend. Okay, so maybe True Blood takes the concept of the angry black woman a little too seriously. Next thing you're gonna tell me they've got some spiritual black cook like that guy in The Shining. But that'd be ridiculous, right? Onion rings? And if you drop a few of them on the floor, that's fine with me. Got it. Suck it, chicka chicka brow round. You look like a porn star with that tan and pink lipstick. You got a date? No, when I wear makeup, I get bigger tips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl, that's it. These damn rednecks are suckers for packaging. And I get even bigger tips when I act like I don't have a brain in my head. But if I don't, they're all scared of me. They ain't scared of you, honey child. They scared of what's between your legs. Well, I say yet. That's nasty talk. I won't listen to that. <laughs> Do you even know what's between a woman's legs, Lafayette? I know every man, whether straight, gay, or George motherfucking Bush, is terrified of the pussy. Lafayette! Oh, what are we talking hey, about? Listen, pussy? not everybody is gay, okay? Not everybody wants to have sex with you. Oh, you would be surprised, Arlene, people you know. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't want to have sex with you. Uh-uh, me neither. Mm -mm. Y'all bitches just don't know what you're missing. I got oh, six oh, years oh, on these oh. hips. No, baby, you don't know what you're missing. You can watch it walk away, make you want to slap it. Oh, you want to slap it? Everybody know that. Everybody been there. Ain't that right? John been there. I'm slapping it. Take these, baby. Peaches and cream. I give you a little Peaches cocoa. Peaches cream. A little cocoa. Ain't that right, John? Shit. <laughs> What am I trying to say here, other than the fact that Morgan Freeman likes to play a lot of magical black men? There's this Nigerian-American writer named Nnedi Okorafor Mbachu, who talks about a super-duper magical negro, or a black character, usually depicted as wiser and spiritually deeper than the white protagonist, whose purpose in the plot is to help the protagonist get out of trouble, to help the protagonist realize his own faults, and to overcome them. On True Blood, Lafayette functions as a supporting character who dispenses worldly advice and smooth-spoken aphorisms at just the right moments. His flowing, sensual manner of speaking and intimate knowledge of spiritualism and nature constantly sets him apart as the show's exotic character. And that's saying something on a show about vampires. When Jason Stackhouse, one of our saintly white protagonists, approaches Lafayette for help with his sex life, Lafayette selflessly helps him experiment with taking vampire blood as a hallucinogenic drug. Of course, the whole thing is a sexual, spiritual affair. This blood is life. One drop, that's all you need. Can't be greedy. Billions of molecules of pure, undiluted, 24 karat life. Vampire is that? He's new. So the blood is still a little wild. I can feel him in my muscles, making me strong. <sighs> but you might get another side of him. The same V could affect you in a whole nother way. But I guarantee you'll see the world with new eyes.
So what have we learned from all this? Well, for one, True Blood, although ripe with narrative variability, creative storytelling, and superb ensemble acting, still falls into the ilk of shows that commodify otherness for the purpose of diversity, or as Bell Hooks puts it, spice. The stereotypes that we see reinforced every day on television only testify to how prevalent dominant ideology is in contemporary media representation. TV still has a long way to go before it starts showing us anything that resembles reality. But you didn't need me to tell you that, did you? Separate!